Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habit tafilah question was asked Assalamu alaikum I hope you're well I was born a Muslim How do I get iman true belief If I have none And how do I rid myself of hypocrisy in belief I know the hadith about fearing hypocrisy But I'm being honest about the hypocrisy I have in my heart I've done a lot of wrong in my life and a lot of evil sins. I don't know if this is sincere, but I've asked a lot of people for help and I'm not getting anywhere. And in all honesty, I don't put enough effort in. All I've done is live a life of lies and please try to understand I know what's in my heart. My heart is full of kufr and nifaq. Everyone makes excuses for me. But I know genuinely they're wrong. I have a lot of evil thoughts and stupid ideas that pop into my mind. Uh, the last two months have been rough, but then again, in hindsight, my life has been a lie for so long. Please, can you help me? I don't know if you will reply, but if you don't, please make dua for me. Jazakallah khair. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your affairs easy and our affairs easy. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Ya hayyul ya qayyum. برحمتك استغيث أصلح لشاني كله ولا تكلني لنفسي طرفة العين. So first and foremost, it's very important to supplicate to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala often. And one of the first issue that requires addressing is you said, uh, please can you help me? And you also mentioned that I don't put enough effort in. So, first and foremost, you have to want to change your your state because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he mentions in the Quran, that he only helps of people when they help themselves. So, in order to be sincere and show sincerity to Allah and to get his help and assistance, then you've got to put the effort in. You've got to try. If you don't try, no one can help you. And we give the example, I, I do this all the time with, uh, related to my job. As they say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And if you have a dead horse and you drop it in the water, what is it going to do? Maybe its mouth will fill up with water just from being under the water, but it's not going to benefit the horse. The horse is dead. So my point is, is that you have to make effort. And the Arabs, they have a statement. They say, من جد وجد من زرع uh, Hassan, whoever uh, strives to achieve something, they will achieve something. You know, if you make an effort, you're going to achieve something. And if you plant something, something, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, will grow. Now, so first and foremost, you need to make effort. And secondly, or more importantly, is that you have to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've talked about many times about the issue of tawakkul. Tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the ulama they mention, uh, a tawakkul huwa itimad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. Which means that tawakkul, relying or putting your trust in Allah, which you have to do, it is making efforts and means, taking the means that are available to you to achieve whatever you're trying to achieve and then putting your heart and the uh, affairs of it being it happening uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, leaving the natija or leaving the end result with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, your situation, you feel desperate with regards to your religion and you're asking for help. So first, and you already mentioned that you're not making effort. So there's a lot of contradiction there. So you have to make effort. Effort is not just asking people. That could be one just for some advice, and that's what we're trying to offer here. But really the effort is, is by striving to come closer to Allah, making sure you're doing the wajibat. You're doing your five daily prayers. Try to read some Quran to... to, 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 to uh, Give your heart some soul food. Listen to lectures that help to boost your iman. 
And even if you have, if you can make time to sit in some sort of circle of ilm, of knowledge, or Quran, memorizing the Quran, this is going to help you. It's going to help you put everything in perspective in the dunya, in this world of life. Because this world gets full of disappointments and full of things to make you depressed and challenge you and to give you anxiety and nervousness and all these things. It's already, it's there. And there's so many traps of the shaitan. The shaitan just has trap after trap after trap. And the way to deal with that is you need to use your ibadah as your weapon in your defense in order to uh, protect you, in order to, as a means of seeking guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hidayah, al-hidayah, is from Allah. Min yahdi Allah, huwa mahtad. Whoever Allah guides, then he is guided. Wa min yudlil, fala hadiya lahum. And whoever is misguided, there's no guidance for him. No matter how many imams he asked, no matter how many sheikhs he, he sought um, information from, no matter how many walis or awliya or saints or you know righteous people, so to speak, that he went to, it's only going to be from Allah Azza wa Jal. The hidayah, the guidance is from Allah. And this brings up a point. Al-Hidayah, because you're asking for some assistance. Al-Hidayah, the concept of guidance in Islam, the scholars mention that it's of two types. Al-Hidayah to Arshad, uh, Irshad, wa Hidayah, Hidayah to Tawfiq. Hidayah to Irshad is something right now we're trying to give you some Irshad. So you ask me a question and I'm trying to advise you and give you some spiritual advice to give you some spiritual guidance, okay? That is hidayat uh, irshad. That is one type of guidance, the guidance of, uh, you know, asking and looking for the means in the creation to, uh, to find guidance. The other type of guidance, which is the one you really need to be concerned with, is hidayat tawfiq. This is the guidance, which means Allah has given you the success of what you're trying to achieve. So you, that means Allah has given you the guidance. So you're asking and you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the result is that you got guided. That's from Allah. No one can give you that. مَنْ يَهْدِي اللَّهُ Whoever Allah guides, then he is guided. So that is hidayah at-tawfiq. Good. طيب. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi the sta'anta fi sta'indillah that if you seek help that isti'ana which is a type of ibadah this is a type of worship especially when your heart is involved it's not, not just asking someone a, a question or help me lift my groceries no, but the isti'ana, the help, which is, you know, that involves faith. Putting your trust totally that this is going to, that you're going to have success and that you need the help to the extent that it's an act of worship. That is, becomes worship. That is the isti'ana, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is referring to, that you need to put your trust totally in Allah. You need, as you ask, please can you help me? Oh Allah, please can you help me? That's what you need to do. And you need to do that when you're in sujood. And you need to strive to wake up in the night and do that in the night prayer. And you need to do that in the rain. And you need to do that when you are a traveler. And you need to do that as much as possible, just supplicating to your Lord. Those are just times when it's accepted in between... Uh, uh, Asr and Maghrib on the day of Jumu'ah, the, the Friday prayer. So do your wajib duties and seek refuge and help and assistance from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll give you an example myself, as many of us who reverted to Islam. And, and as you illustrate that you were born a Muslim and you experienced something similar too. But those of us who came to Islam, you know, everyone's Islam really is a growth process. You grow. You grow. It's a spiritual growth. And it's a spiritual path. And with that being the case, 
you know, you go through different stages of Iman, the shaitan comes to you, and if you don't have knowledge, you don't have ways to deal with that, so you're, you're going to grow. But for me personally, in my spiritual path, one of the things, it was just keeping the prayer. It was keeping the prayer. I may have been doing other things, and I was a new Muslim, I didn't know, I, I didn't really even know, I was a DJ, had my dreads on my shoulders. Uh, I was DJing and, you know, different kind of things and weddings and stuff like this and, and so on and so forth. And, and this is just to share with you my path, not to brag about uh, sins or anything. But even then, I didn't shake the hands of women, which was interesting, even though you had all kind of engagements and interactions. And, you know, you're DJing. But the point is, is I always made sure, of course, our gigs, our DJing was after a show. Or sometimes they might be, actually, they might, you know, if it's a wedding, it might have been between, you know, it might have been, been in the afternoon. But I was always praying. I always, you know, it was with my cousin. You know, hey, I got to go, you know, I got to pray. He didn't like that because he wasn't a Muslim. But I say, hey, I got to go. So I go find a quiet place, have wudu, and pray. Okay? So it was the salat. And that bond with my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, which kept me. And many other things, many of us. I know so many brothers who went through the stages. They used to do some of the worst sins, but they would get immediately, make ghusl and make rakatain and pray two units of prayer. So whatever you're doing, whatever you've done, the path of repentance is open. And Allah knows. But you got to put your trust in Allah. You got to establish that 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 connection with your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala. As far as being a hypocrite and having hip hypocrisy in your heart, uh, those things, of course, we can't assess and judge. But and if you feel those things, the the point I want to make is what is illustrating that you are incorrect. At least in one aspect, you said, how do I get Iman true belief if I have none? That's not true. You do have some. You have Iman. That, to me, this is my Dalil is just what you said. My Dalil, my evidence for saying that you are a person from Ahli Iman, you are a Muslim, is just the fact that you have been seeking help. You know what you're doing is wrong and you're still seeking. But the one, fi him marad, the one whose heart is sick, and who's a pure hypocrite, they would never do that. They would just show show to the people that they're Muslim, but inside it would be uh, wickedness and evil, and they would just continue on with their wickedness and evil, but or, or at least outward to please the people, be with the Muslims, but in fact hate the Muslims and hate Islam and hate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the hypocrite. So my evidence... For saying that you are not a hypocrite. And no doubt that you are a person of Iman. Even if your Iman is being tested and it's weak right now. Is the fact that you're asking. You're seeking. And that's the first step. And that's what Allah loves. Allah loves that. Allah loves even more that you worship Him and Him alone. And you give Him His right. The right of Allah is that you worship Him and Him alone and you don't associate any partners with Him. So the fact that you're still supplicating to, uh, you're still seeking help and seeking help to come to be better, this is a sign of good. This is a sign that Allah wants good for you because He could have left your heart sealed and misguided to where you just by the wayside. So you've got to have a positive image about your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that you have a positive uh, view that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help you, that he's going to answer your prayers, that it's going to eventually, it's going to get better. But that's on you. You've got to take those steps. And you, that means taking steps means efforts. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.